All three of the NoFap testimonials in the previous episode, and indeed every testimonial that I've ever seen coming out of the NoFap community, fundamentally begins with an assertion that the person no longer wants to be controlled by their sex drive. They're noticing the problems of anhedonia, they begin to suspect that PMO is damaging their life somehow, they realize that indulgent masturbation might be keeping them from finding a real relationship. So their personal revolution begins with a determination to start exercising self-control. The sex drive will no longer control them, they will now control their sex drive. And they're taking control with the idea that by doing so, they're actually setting themselves up for something much, much better. They're saying, I'm willing to control myself and give up the short-term pleasure of masturbation now so that I might achieve something much better in life further down the line. They're willing to delay their gratification. And it's the ability to do that, it's the ability to delay gratification, to give up something small in the short term, to gain something big in the long term that makes all the difference in life. This is such an important principle. There was a famous experiment carried out in the 1960s and early 1970s at Stanford University by a psychologist called Walter Mischel. It's become known as the Marshmallow Test. In the test, boys and girls between the ages of three and five years old were individually taken into a room and sat down at a table. In front of them was a single marshmallow. They were told by an adult researcher that they were going to be left alone in the room with that marshmallow and they could eat it if they wanted to. However, if they managed to resist that urge for 15 minutes, then not only could they eat that marshmallow, but they would be given a second one as well. One marshmallow now or two later, if you exercise self-control, that was the deal. The researchers wanted to know at what age children developed the ability to control their urges and delay gratification for the better reward. Michel observed the battle that each child had with themselves when they were left alone. He said that some would cover their eyes with their hands or turn around so they can't see the tray, others start kicking the desk or tug their pigtails or stroke the marshmallow as if it were a tiny stuffed animal. Now in the end, some caved and some didn't, but it wasn't until 1990 that a follow-up study revealed the true significance of that experiment. The newer study discovered that people who had been able to exercise self-control and delay gratification as kids performed far better later in life than those who had caved. They attained better grades at school, they had secured higher paying jobs, had fewer obesity problems, less alcohol and drug dependencies, had less divorces, and their general life circumstances were just far, far better. In fact, so famous did this study become that self-discipline became regarded by scientists as the single most important factor in determining the outcome of a person's life. So you can hopefully see the link to masturbation here. You can have the single marshmallow of masturbation now, or if you're willing to delay the gratification, then you're far more likely to get a whole pile of marshmallows further down the line. All the stuff we've been talking about, character development, real relationship, real family, eventually real grandkids, all that good stuff. Furthermore, if you can conquer this urge, then you can conquer all of your urges. If you can build self-discipline in this area, then you'll build the self-discipline that will serve you in all areas of your life further down the line. And that's what this experiment proved, that we must learn to control our appetites, all of them. Not just the appetite for food, but the appetite for sex, for rest, and for everything else. People who regularly capitulate to their urges and who can't say no to themselves, turns out, will live severely diminished lives. If you can't say no to your urges, then the science tells us that your life will be poor. We must have self-control. Remember Paul's message to the Corinthians that we must never be enslaved to anything. Well, the science tells us that that is incredible wisdom. We must never be a slave to any urge. We must learn to master them and learn how to delay gratification. And if we can achieve this single thing, this one thing in life, our lives will be massively improved. Jesus spoke about the importance of delaying gratification too, albeit under a slightly different context. He said, watch out, don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. When you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth, they have received all the reward they will ever get. But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private, and your Father who sees everything will reward you. 
So you see what Jesus is saying here. You can get a small reward of praise from men now, if you want, by doing your good deeds publicly, or if you're willing to delay gratification and keep it secret for now, you will get a much better reward from God himself further down the line. One marshmallow now or many marshmallows later, you can choose. This is such an important spiritual discipline to grasp hold of. It's also important to keep this principle in mind for motivation purposes too. When you understand that by stopping masturbation, you're not giving something up as much as you're actually preparing yourself for something much better, then it gives you the motivation that you need to stay the course. Jordan Peterson was once asked by a viewer how to summon the motivation to quit his porn addiction. And this is what he said. What advice would you give to someone looking to quit porn? Well, I gave some advice a little earlier about quitting alcohol, you know, and I would say it isn't that you're trying to quit porn. It's not the right way to think about it. The right way to think about it is that you're trying to figure out how to have a better life. And so you have to figure out, well, I would say do the future authoring program and keep your porn addiction in mind and think. So in the first part of the future authoring program, it asks you a bunch of questions about what your life could be like in three to five years if you took care of yourself like you were someone that you cared for. Um, and then it asks you questions about your friends and your family and your career and your time outside of work and your health and you know the important dimensions of life and it, it asks you to spend um, 20 minutes writing about how good your life could be in three to five years if you got your act together and did what was good for you and then it asks you to write about the hell you could be in if you didn't and so I would say you really need to do that because porn isn't the issue the issue is that you're not living your life the way you want to and so you need a vision of life that's more compelling than the porn and you need a counter vision too that frightens you you know, because otherwise, porn is obviously extraordinarily gratifying in the short term, but, but you seem to be suffering from the medium to long term consequences of its use. And so you need a story that you can tell yourself that's really deeply thought through about why this is not appropriate for you, what's, what it's, how it's hurting you and, and how it's minimizing you and mi perhaps making you embarrassed and ashamed and more socially isolated and all of that. So I would say, think about it as cleaning up your psyche and, and your behavior rather than merely start stopping, uh, stopping porn. So when you're quitting masturbation, don't think of it as giving something up. Think of it as preparing yourself to attain something much better. Don't think of the marshmallow that you're denying yourself. Think of all the marshmallows that you stand to gain if you exercise self-control. Experts sometimes call this having a North Star, and it simply means that you need a vision to place your focus on in the future to compel you to stay on a difficult course. Having that vision, having that North Star, means that you're far more likely to persevere with a difficult task than if you don't. So for example, say someone is morbidly obese and they want to lose weight. They won't do it by focusing on all the food that they're giving up. It's only going to make them more hungry and more likely to cave if they keep focusing on and thinking about that food. So instead they need a North Star. They need a compelling vision of all the great outcomes that could exist further down the line if they were to persevere with this weight loss. They need a story to tell themselves of who they could be in the future. Someone who is fit and strong and healthy and who's extending their lives to be around for their kids and their grandkids. Whenever they feel their willpower beginning to waver a little bit, maybe a donut looks quite tempting on the table, it's that star that they need to look to so that they will indeed stay the course. And that vision has to be more compelling than whatever food it is that they're currently tempted to eat. Now it's the same with porn and compulsive masturbation. When quitting PMO, it isn't really that you're giving something up. It's more that you're training yourself to attain something much, much better. All these marshmallows are far more likely to be yours if you exercise self-control. I think Peterson is also correct about writing it down too. That's something that you could do right now. You could do that today. Write down a compelling vision of where your life could be in three to five years time if you mastered your urges. Whether it be your urges for food, for sleep, for sex, whatever it is that you currently struggle with, who could you be if you became self-disciplined? Write it down and give yourself that North Star. And then compare that vision to what your life will be like in three to five years time if you don't find self-control and you continue to be dominated by your desires. 
The bottom line is this, if you're willing to use self-control and delay gratification, then you are far more likely to have a better life. The science tells us that self-control is vital for optimizing your future.